pandemic, we have to look unto Jesus. Amen? If Jesus conquered tribulation, we will conquer tribulation. But we have to follow his example. Looking unto Jesus. Amen? Just look unto Jesus. Nothing else. You know, don't focus on this new variant. They say, uh, well, more deadly. No symptoms. Well, I I'm, let's just look on Jesus Christ. I think... You know, it may get, you know, more variants may get worse, you know. But no, we're not going to look at that. We're just going to look at Jesus. Amen? Looking at the Jesus. That's, that's, that's all we can do. Amen? And then, the author and the finisher of our faith. Why look unto Jesus? It's because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Author and finisher of our faith. That means he he authored everything. You know, this is predestination now, right? Predestination. Uh, he authored everything in the future. From the from past to present to future, he saw it all. He knew it all and he authored, he, he decreed, he ordained, he planned. He has a purpose for things that are happening, amen, in our lives. That's called sovereignty. Amen. God in His divine sovereignty is working out everything that is happening today and in the future. He is working it out, everything, including the, this pandemic, according to the counsel, the wise counsel of His will. Whatever his purposes are, he will accomplish it. And just like the life of Jesus, he had to go through mockery, rejection, spitting, you know, uh, beatings, torture, false trial. You know, Jesus went, underwent a false trial. That means before the San Sanhedrin, the religious council, prosecuted him, the verdict was already made, death, right? And Jesus knew it, that he would die, he would have to die. But that's the will of God, he would have to die. But God was doing all of that, you know, God decreed all of that, you know, the soldiers, Judah, everything was authored, decreed, ordained. Nothing happened to Jesus that was not ordained. Decree, that's predestination. There's nothing that can happen that God did not decree. Amen? Amen. And so, yeah. How do I look at my present life? How do, how do we look at our present tribulations? Everything that is happening today is ordained by God, allowed by God. Or it cannot happen. If God did not ordain it, if God did not allow it, it cannot happen. Right? That's fact number one. God, there are things that are happening in this world because God allowed it. God or permitted it. God ordained it. That means chances do not, there are no chances in life. No chances. There are no chances. This world is not ruled by chances. Mm -hmm. Okay? This world is not ruled by man. Man makes decisions, including the presidents, kings. They make decisions, but they can only do things God allowed them to do. Their decisions... Uh, their decisions, good and bad, and sometimes God allows evil, God allows sin. Mm -hmm. Like the crucifixion, God allowed the murder of his son. Mm -hmm. Right? He only allowed things that serve his purpose. That serve his overall purpose. 
If it's outside of God's purposes, there's nothing Satan, man, can do. So when bad things happen, again, this is a coping skill. Okay? That's why the title is Coping with the Pandemic. See, embrace the pandemic. Don't hate it. Don't, don't live every day worrying about, you know, when will this leave, you know? What can I do to, keep, you know, kick out this pandemic, you know? I, don't stress over it. Because when, it's, when God is finished, when the timeline, yeah. when God is finished with it, it will go. Amen. When God is finished. Don't sweat over it. Don't fight over it. Just learn to live with it. Amen? Amen. God has a purpose. Amen. You know? And you know, the devil cannot do anything that God does not allow. So sometimes God, God allows demonic attack. Look at Job. God allowed satanic attack. Amen? Uh, look at Joseph. God allowed Joseph to be sold by his own brothers to slavery. And then he became a prisoner, a, a slave, falsely accused. He became a prisoner. It got worse, right? <laughs> his life got worse. But you know, at the end, in Genesis, I believe 45, and Genesis chapter 45 and 50, when Joseph was on the throne and he saw his brothers begging for food at the line, at the lineup, he saw his own brothers begging for food. Joseph knew them, recognized them. Amen? And, you know, of course, it's a long story how Joseph revealed himself to them, but, you know, they were all scared of him, right? Because... They all betrayed him. But anyway, in the end, this is what Joseph said to his brothers. You did not send me here. It was God who sent me here. I love that. For the saving of many. Don't worry. Because they were, they were afraid Joseph would kill them, right? Joseph would have them executed one by one, right? But Joseph said, do not worry. God sent me here before you. For the saving of many. It was not you who sent me here. But God. Amen. And that's the mystery of sovereignty. God can use the devil, God can use sin, God can use people who betray you to accomplish his will. Amen. So when you get fired, terminated from what, don't get bitter. That happened to my wife in 2012. She lost a $50,000 income back then, plus her private pension. Um, don't get bitter. And she was treated like a criminal. You know, same day, after giving the notice of termination, she wasn't allowed to hang around. She was escorted outside of the building. Like a criminal. Maybe they think you might, you know, you might have got abo, di ba, sa Pilipinas? Kukuha na taga. Just in case mag ka, Right, so for security, they escorted her. I mean, she's not a violent person. So how does that make you feel? How does that make you feel? And yet, I thank God for that. I thank God. Now I understand the purpose. I'm not going to tell you everything, but it's a long story. It was good for Joash. Because mama pampered him at a very delicate age, 14, 13. She, he needed guidance, and mama was there for him, bringing him food every day on his own. Otherwise, he would have been in the gutter today. Yeah. Amen? 
you know, not only that, for your life. You know, you're in a stressful job. You want to live up to 85 years old. I want to live up to 90 and be with my wife. And if she died early because of stress, if she was there another 10 years, I think it would have been worse. I mean, that's a terrible place there, really. It's terrible. You can't handle the stress there. But anyway, a company culture change. They, they got a new president from the States, and the culture of the company became worse. People were treated like slaves. <laughs> American. American culture, I don't know. But what is this, slave mentality? But anyway, let's move on. But we Canadians are known for being more humane, isn't it? Amen. There will be the happy passes there. Kind. There will be more bad apples there. Bad employers. Anyway, uh, so you cope with these things by acknowledging that God is in control. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's it. You know, I was stripped of my work permit. In, 89, 88. And I was mocked by the immigration officer right in front of the counter at the head office in downtown. But you know, God has a plan. Because I would become a full time Bible student. Now I have a student permit for the next three years, full time. Because God knew I would not go to Bible college. No. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just Hindi niya ako pinakawalan. Although misa nag-aaway kami ng Diyos eh. Yeah. Sometimes He overrules your life. Because He's sovereign. Right? Well, God has a purpose, so I'll just follow that. Whatever that plan is, well, I will do it. Amen? But anyway, God is good, so... How do you look at this COVID or pandemic, tribulation, pestilences, end time scenario? <laughs> People are talking now about the enterprise and tribulation, you know? Too much speculations. The second coming, you know? Gina was just reading the rapture today. Well, it will get worse. So what's our coping? Still keep looking unto Jesus. So, so he authored it. Okay, he saw it. Everything that happens is according to God's plan. Good and bad is according to God's plan. In Joseph, the bad things were still part of the plan, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, do you know that the brothers wanted to kill him? Yeah. And with divine intervention, Benjamin said, no way, we're not going to kill him. We're going to just put him on the well. And then those carnal brothers saw the slave merchants, you know? Let's sell him here. Let's sell him to the slave traders without realizing that they are helping God fulfill the plan. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. The wisdom of God. Amen. Oh, I study all these things. I use this in my debates. When I defend sovereignty, I have to use all these examples. Mm. Amen? Because there are those who don't believe in divine sovereignty. They think man is in control. They think man is libertarian free will. He controls his own destiny. I don't think so. I don't believe that. Amen? I believe in predestination. So that's, that's coping number one, okay? Understand the sovereignty of God. If you get a flat tire, get stranded on the road for three hours, maybe God saved you from a, a, a nasty accident. Mm -hmm. Don't complain about it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Another coping skill in James. Again, I'm talking about what attitudes we need. James. Uh, 
chapter 1. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So coping skill number one, trust in the sovereignty of God. Amen. Look unto Jesus. Number two, count it all joy. Verse 2, chapter 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. You know, the more trials we have, the Bible says, count it all joy. The more trials you have, the more joyful you become. You know? Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Well, let patience have its perfect work that you may be mature, perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Do you know what trials make us mature? Amen. Trials develop character. Trials develop patience. You, we will never have patience. Do you think you can develop your own patience? You can't. But, but God has a way of molding us. Amen? Amen. Amen? So if you get fired, terminated five times, you know, in five years, well, you're used to it. That's me. <laughs> right? You get used to it. So from 2012 up to 2016, about four or five years, Zina was on and off work. Between EI and temporary work, EI and temporary work, EI for the next four years, five years. But in 2016, October, she got hired again permanently. That's her job now. But she, we're praying, will quit at age 62. Because I don't want to be a widow. I need my partner. I, I believe God will provide for us. Amen. 62. Amen. Lord willing. Amen? If it's the Lord's will. Okay, let's go move on. Because she's worked hard for many, many years. And, you know, yeah, I remember our beloved sister Gloria, who now lives in Hope. Uh, I had a chat with her the other day. She's only 75. There you go. Oh, 78 now. Yeah, 78. But she always tells this story that she started working at eight, eight years old. That's a, that's a long time. <laughs> 11 years old. And now, as I talk with her, you know, you know, you have to help her memory a little bit. Yeah, no. yeah so, you know, I really believe at 90, we can still become president. <laughs> Right? If you're mentally sharp. Yeah. Mm. You can still be elected for president. Mm. But if you abuse your body, no. So anyway, that's what that's my whole philosophy. You don't have to do that. It's just my own beliefs. Okay? I'm not imposing it on you. It's just our own prayer request. Why why not? You know, if you can't afford it, right? Why not, if you can't afford it? Do you know what happened in Sumas Lake? That means people are gonna be fighting for houses in Fraser Heights and Fleetwood. Who would want to live in Sumas <laughs> and Chiliwa? Now our house will just go crazy in the next couple of years, right? But this is just my own analysis. It can happen if the Lord you know, just full time in ministry, you don't have, you don't need to work, why not? That's the best life, right? Amen. Now I don't have to drive every day too. Drive her to work back and forth twice a day. So let's go now to coping skills. Count it all joy. The more problems you have, the more be joyful. Because God is working on your patience. God is working on your on your character. And you know, no one of us, no one is perfect in this world. God is still molding us. God is still working. Amen. Amen. 
you know, if you're just an ordinary person, maybe life is a lot easier for you. But when you're a public figure, it's even more difficult. Amen? So, that means you, you need to learn more skills, you need to have more patience, and you need to be a much stronger person, you know? But, you know, God will perfect us, God, so that we lack nothing. So that we lack nothing in terms of character. So yeah, this COVID, this pandemic is what? A test of faith. See, it's mentioned here, knowing that the testing of your faith, verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces perseverance and endurance. I know financially we're all hard up, right? That could be a testing time, you know, unemployment, financial crisis, emergencies here in, in the Philippines, that, that will all test our, our faith. And yet, in spite of all these things, God still expects us to be faithful to Him. Amen. Right? Faithful Amen. to Him in, in giving Him, you know, our offerings, right? God still expects that, that we gather together every Sunday and honor Him with our first fruits. Okay. In spite of emergencies, unemployment. <laughs> but hey, it's a test of character. Amen? It's a test of character. You know, I think in our case, money will never become an issue in the future. We can serve with and without support. The time will come. I can offer community volunteer ministry. I'll just be your community pastor, community a volunteer community pastor. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, you know, my ministry is not determined by pay and salary. God will take care of us. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. I just hope that one day I'll be like Abraham with strong legs or Moses. Mm -hmm. And I could still serve him even in old age and still have a lot of funds to support myself. That's the goodness of God. Amen? So count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So that's coping skill number two. Count it all joy. Amen? So don't gloom over this pandemic. <laughs> You know, maintaining a joyful spirit is contagious. Make sure you protect your joy. Don't let anything hinder it. Uh, on the opposite, on the other hand, negative spirit can also be contagious. Do you know that bitterness, negativity, uh, murmuring is Highly contagious. If I have a chance, a choice, you know, to be with 10 people who are bitter versus 10 people who are joyful, you know, it's a no brainer. Where do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Right? No. It's as simple as, you know, just, well, I want to live long, so I'll go this way. Amen? Well, yeah, so anyway, let's move on. Number three, I can't, I only try to preach 45 minutes now. 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Just quick. Yeah. Talk fast, please. Because, uh, but you know, you, you're getting a lot of supplements midweek, right? <laughs> don't you can listen to my eight minute video on YouTube no and it, you get the word, right? You get the word in eight minutes, you get the word in five minutes straight to the point. So that's, I don't need to preach an hour and a half here anymore. Please. Psalms 139, again, back to 
predestination again. Our lives have been ordained from beginning to end. You know, as I've said earlier, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, Psalms 139. Yeah, it's hard to flip this Bible with one hand. Okay. Verse 15, I'm just going to read two verses. My frame was not hidden from you. Well, let's start from verse 14. Oh, verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You have covered me in my mother's womb. You know how the sovereignty of God, even inside your mother's womb, He formed your DNA, your giftings in life, your, your gifts, your abilities, right? Uh, he formed your inward parts when you were inside your mother's womb. You know, if you have a high IQ, it's because the Lord gave you one. If you are if you love, if you're generous, if you're compassionate, it's because I believe the Lord put those personality traits in you. Right? Amen. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret. Your eyes, verse 16, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. See, even before you were conceived in your mother's womb, God already saw you. God already saw your substance, your form, your body, your appearance, your gifting, your personality. He already saw all of that. Amen. Even before your conception. Amen. Verse 16, and in your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me. In your book they were all written, the days fashioned for you. When as yet there were none of them, even though those days never existed yet, even though the future wasn't yet. From 5,000 years ago, mm -hmm. the Lord saw what would happen on this day. So the Lord saw that day when I would be stripped of my work visa in Canada. The Lord saw that day when you got terminated from work. The Lord saw that day when Joseph was sold as a slave. The Lord saw that day when Jesus was killed at the cross. Nothing happens by accident. Amen. The Lord saw that day when Judas would choose to betray him. That's why Jesus said, whatever you must do, do it quickly. Do you know you can say that to your boss? If they're Planning evil against you, si si bakin ka nila, pinag-usap ka na nila. Sometimes the the only the best scenario is to get out of that situation. So you go to them, whatever you do, do it quickly. If you know, if you're one hundred percent sure that God is removing you and God is leading you somewhere else, you can say that. And if you have the faith to trust in the Lord that He will take care of you for the next six months, if you can afford it, sometimes that, that's all you need to do. To be sense in your heart, God is already closing this door. And you can just go and thank everyone and say to them, whatever you do, do it quickly. Just make sure I get that piece of paper because I need that for my employment insurance. <laughs> And then you get to live another 20 years longer. Longer. Amen? Amen. Do you know you, you're, you should be more faithful to yourself than to your employer? They don't care. Only God cares for you and you for yourself. Do you think they'll look after you in the nursing home? No. They won't be even there when you die. No. So don't be a hero. Don't be a martyr. Amen? 
Just trust in the Lord. God will provide. Amen. So all the days God saw, it's all written in His book. So here's the thing. In His book, we wish everything that happened is all blessings. We wish nothing bad happens, but that's impossible. In His book are written everything. Not just blessings, promotions, but trials and tribulations. Including death in the family, including early terminations, that includes cancer in 2009, that includes whatever tribulation, you know, you will have in the future, it's all written there. Right? And when they happen, they happen not because of chance or because of unfortunate events or because of bad luck, bad luck, or dahil nakakita ka ng itim na pusa, or nakulam ka. No. Or because your enemies plotted against you. No, they don't happen because of anything else. They happen because God ordained, God wrote it in the book. So let's face it, when our employer caused post-traumatic stress, God allowed that maybe for your own good, right? And that happens at work, I know that. Uh, maybe God is saving you. God has a purpose. What I'm saying is behind every bad event, God has a purpose. When God allows it, it's because it's serving His purpose. So, if somebody threw a rock at you, <laughs> cool, easy, uh, you know, pray, what's the purpose of that? Why did it happen, you know? Maybe God has something. Amen? Maybe God knows it's best for the future that that thing happened. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the thing is, we have a mysterious God who is intelligent and full of wisdom, and we will never always understand what He's doing. We will never understand, and He doesn't have to explain to you. Amen? Why you became a widow. God doesn't have to apologize to you that He made you a widow. Do you think God will apologize to us? It's His plan. We all have an appointed time. So if we become a, become a widow, don't get bitter at God, you know. Just move on and serve Him. Amen? So everything is written in that book. Do you think God will show you what's written in that book? We live by faith. You never know what today will bring. What tomorrow will bring. What the next day. We just walk by faith day after day. Amen. So that's my encouragement. So coping skill number three. Uh, again, it's about predestination. You know, believe that God has planned everything, you know. Don't get shocked when things happen. God foresaw that. God already knew that. Amen? Don't get surprised by, you know, life's, you know, tribulations. Or, or don't get, you know, life, life has a lot, brings a lot of surprises. Uh, and when they happen, don't get shocked. Uh, just relax. Go home, you're dead, your dog is dead. You just, I know it's it's hard for some some people that love their dogs, but you just you know, thank you, Lord. You saw this happening. Amen. I will put my trust in you. I'm not gonna mourn over this for five years. 
Amen. So yeah, so that's number three. Everything has been written down already. So don't blame everyone. Don't blame people when bad things happen to you. It will make matters worse. So I guess what can I say? I guess we are predestined. You know, I know we did our best to study our options in this building, you know. It's expensive. We, we hired a lawyer. We, we, we tried to work around it. If we can abandon this, I think we entertained that idea. And that has been suggested. By, but you know what? I, I really believe with all my heart now, God did not allow us. Bottom line is God did not allow us to go anywhere. Amen. For a purpose. Uh, because, you know, if, if the church dies early, I will survive. But it's not the will of God for the body of Christ to die early. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, still, God is still, you know, that's why he's the author and the finisher. finisher. We will finish the way God ordained it to be. I cannot change it. You cannot change it. We just follow God. That's why it's useless when we make our plans, you know, at 62 Comfort, ano lang yun eh? Comfort dreaming. There's nothing wrong with inamangarap lang yun sa inyo, di ba? Wala nang masama doon, libre yun. It's free, yeah. You can dream all day. It's free. Yeah? We always dream about, oh, I would love, I would love to have that vehicle in retirement, you know? I love that vehicle, you know? We always do that, right? We dream for our kids, we dream for our lives, but you know, in the end, only God knows what will happen. Amen. Amen. And, and we cannot change the plan. That's it. Amen. So we have been predestined. This church has been predestined. And you know, another explanation, when bad things happen, the same with the church, bad things will happen to the church. And we will have no answers for that. Except sometimes it's just how God operates. There are things that He allows for a reason. And we don't know why, but there's a reason for allowing things in the body of Christ. Even in my own family, there are things that happened that I did not like. But you know how God turned things around? Amen. You know, Joash is an artist who sings his life on public. His testimony. His testimony. And he would not shy away after five years of telling about his past. Mm -hmm. When I sometimes listen to his songs, it just makes me cry. It reminds me yeah. of how, you know, of having to live and cope with him and protect him and chase him and police him. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were like police, you know, I, I drove my car like a police car in mm -hmm. Fraser Heights, mm -hmm. chasing him. He was on his skateboard sometimes. <laughs> and Gina was, was going to cut through the, the walkways, you know, the back alleys. <laughs> to chase him. Just, just to corner <laughs> just, just to corner him. Hallelujah. You know, why did that happen, you know? You know, there was a time he didn't go home for three days, and I saw him at the back of the gas station. Mm -hmm. And he looked like a street dog. It's dirty. Yeah. And he didn't have a show for three days. Thank the Lord. And, and you know, when he was sleeping, you know. But you know, today we have a sweet story to tell. Mm -hmm. of that. He's a well decorated man. Thank you, Lord. He graduated with honors Thank in you. Scotland. Thank you. He earned like almost $30,000, maybe $40,000, $50,000 of scholarship grants. Thank you, Lord. He has a story to tell. Amen. He's an artist. He's, he's an artist who sings the gospel. Amen. 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 But you know, even before that, Christians were putting him down, yeah. gossiping him. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. Amen. 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 Amen.
Tis mis din abi si Joseph. Nisa mahal na lang yari kay Joseph. Bakit pinagkaya sa asya ng mga kapatid niya? Kasi naman yung tatay niya nagpe-play favorite. Napakasama ng tatay mo. Sabi mo naman doon sa bari-bari. Napakasama ng tatay mo. Favorite. May favorite siya eh. You know, we don't know what's in the mind of God. Amen. 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 Right? Amen. Amen. We can't just speak things out of our mouth. We have to be discerning, you know. We have to learn how to be, you know, controlled and, and sober, you know. We're not to be quick to judge. Amen? Because God has a plan. We don't know what that is. Amen? Praise God. So let's all stand this. Let's just thank the Lord. God is good. All the time. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. God is good. You know, we don't have a perfect place to meet. Uh, this building is not perfect. But at least, you know, under the circumstances, I'm just thankful that we can meet freely here. Amen? And uh, we can meet legally and freely. Nobody can walk in here and write us a ticket. <laughs> Amen? Because we are not violating any rule. We have a religious right and we're meeting in our own exclusive We are rich. We are rich. This building is exclusively ours for the next two and a half years. Amen. So thank God. You know, sometimes, hindi natin naiintindihan, ganun pala ang gusto ng Diyos. Hindi po ba? Ganun pala. So I thank the Lord that you have sheltered us. You know, I remember how God sheltered the Israelites when they were leaving Egypt on the way to the promised land, you know? You know, God was raining fire and hail and storms and thunder, God, on the Egyptians who were chasing them. But you know what? The Israelites were protected. <laughs> they were unaffected. That's us. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory that in this pandemic, we will march our journey safely because we will follow you and you will lead us you will lead every family in freedom fire you will lead them you will remove every confusion you will lead them to your perfect will you will shelter the church in jesus wonderful name thank you amen release these people now bless them amen thank you okay show time uh, before I, I already shared this to the prayer team. Remember the bear was trying to break in the, the church. It's a church building. And I was trying to shoo, 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 shoo. Binagano ko na yung bear. He's not listening to me. And then eventually, the break in pa siya. He broke the door. And then once the bear is on it, and I'm sharing this to you because you need to pray, okay? Uh, the bear uh, forced the door to go inside. Once inside, the bear peacefully sat in the middle of the sanctuary and tried to encourage the people to make a noise. Uh, make a noise so the bear will, uh, will go. But nobody was listening to me. Everybody's deaf. Uh, you know the lesson? Nobody saw the bear, it's only me. The people just know their own thing, partying, talking, because they don't see it. We need the spirit of discernment to see the, de the devil inside your house, inside your family. You need discernment. You need the Holy Spirit. Kaya nandun pa rin siya, peacefully, kasi nobody's bothering him. And they shout out, Evas Espirito sa Pinas, Grace and Step. Because then, uh, I had a, a time to, mayroon akong nagkaroon ako ng chance to see all those names. Si Joseph Bobby, Kuya Bobby, Philippines, Nasmore, La Las Vegas, Janice, Kagiwa, Philippines, Doris Byron, Philippines, Lenore Campos, Prado, Philippines, Madrid Cortez, Suri, Bill Magado, Kindle Burn Street, Maria Torcita, Sister, uh, Ivania, Tani, Philippines, Jonah DeClaro, Canada, Divina Vega, I see there's names, Carlos Gabuda, in France, Marjorie uh, in Canada, Darren, Jeffrey, Banat, Noel Price in 
California, Doug Franklin Surrey, Kala Lili, uh, in Vancouver. So uh, I have these names. Uh, if you're watching right now, uh, because I see all these names the clicking in. See, uh, Doug ba Banag, uh, Bernice, uh, Vani, hi, Sister Vani, we miss you here uh, in New Westminster. Uh, Carlina Ramos, Nancy Jomar, uh, Kituas, Keith Curtis, uh, I see her name, Gemma Ramos, Penitan in Richmond, uh, Shalena in Calgary, uh, Cheryl Gary, uh, Joanne, uh, jo, jo, uh, Anna Julio, maybe you know her, yeah. Dominic, yeah. Anita yeah. Julio, Raul de la Cruz in Maple Ridge, Jim Ramos, Surrey. Uh, Mark Anthony De La Rosa, Surrey, and Gretchen Acoba in Richmond, Josh, my, my son, Ricky Almeida in Philippines, Jim, Jim Borge in Philippines, Jansen Dades uh, in uh, White Rock, in Cristel de Viga, do you know her? Gary de Mantai, Alvin Benigno, Mi, Mi, Mina Nasilia, Philippines. So, Erwin Dolphin, Danny Perez is the pastor's friends. Lucia Tahoe in Philippines. Hi, Mana. Uh, Lucia. Carlina Ramos, Sherita Rosa, and Eric. Ms. Uh, Julio, you know her? Yeah. Oh, Faith Padminao, Leah Liberato, Shirley uh, in, in Spain. Uh, oh, thank you for watching it. Today. Uh, I see them in the, in the, the live. God bless. Have a good day. Okay, thank you so much. Again, uh, if we can just meet informally there, I think about our Christmas. Uh, the thing is, uh, if we bring food here, be allowed. We, because I received this email from ACOP, okay? Not allowed. Uh, direct directives for the churches.